Okay, guys, well, that's Halo CEAs, and basically Combat Evolve. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me for this project. It was really fun to do. Um, I'm sorry, uh, as I got, it took me to about three hours just to do the legendary ending. Maybe I'm not horrible at Halo, but yeah. And, uh, I forgot, one thing about my game is I always have to manually turn on, uh, what is it, captions? Uh, I forgot to turn on captions. It was late. It was early in the morning. Um, so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoy. I did that all for awesomeness. But um, thank you guys for joining me. And let's get into a, a little bit of a review. Uh, I like to do these at the end of every single game I do. A uh, little bit of a review. Uh, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary is fun. Or, well, and since this is basically Combat Evolved, Halo Combat Evolved is fun. It's the game that got everyone into Halo. Uh, every Halo fan into Halo. Well, pretty much. Um, people who people come in at certain points in the franchise, Halo 2, Halo 3, even Halo Reach, and then a lot of them go back and play the other ones. And to see how, the, how, how, far, how well this game holds up, is very astounding and very, I don't know, it, it's cool to see. Um, there are some gameplay mechanics that I don't like, like uh, the plasma or the plasma pistol. Um, just like when they charge it up and, and shoot it at a warthog, it could hit any point in the warthog. It could hit at the butt of the warthog, and yet your shields will still go down. Um, I'm glad that they changed that for the other Halos and on, that it's just an EMP and it, and it doesn't drain your shields and make it easier for you to die. Um, like I said before in one of the parts, this is uh, 2001 and it seems like shooters from this era were hard, even on normal. I mean, I died so many times at certain parts that I cut out in this series so that you guys wouldn't have to deal with it. But, uh, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what else? It, it's really just something that I, it, this is something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, it was really a lot of fun. I, ha I But here's the thing, uh, and I know I said this before, as good as this game is, I'm glad I am done with it. Of course, I'll go back and play it again, maybe in the future, sometime, somewhere. But um, there, I, I, it's time to move on. And I'm probably feel that way about Halo 2. When I was, when I'm near the end of Halo 2, I'll be like, damn, I need to go on to Halo 3 already. And then um, yeah. But people don't really like to, I guess question their favorite games but there are some mechanics that are wonky like I just said the EMP or the EMP whole thing uh, draining your shields uh, the jumping in here and I, I know it's just we can go into story wise why maybe it's because of his armor uh, mark 5 armor but we're, we're not gonna do that we're gonna just say hey this is the first game in the series so all the gameplay mechanics that make Halo Halo weren't necessarily fleshed out yet. Um, the jumping fucked me over plenty of times. I don't know if I cut him out. I may have forgotten. Who knows? But um, there were plenty of times when I would jump and it wouldn't register. It wouldn't register at all. So I would jump and then uh, it'd be like a little jump or it wouldn't even jump at all and I'd land back. Uh, into a pit of enemies when I was supposed to be doing something, especially on the Maw. The Maw was horrible for that. Uh, w one thing I real, I, I guess I like, but then again, you're a super soldier. Um, I, I like the mechanic that uh, when you're a, that you're a super soldier, and if you, if you melee with the assault rifle, it's going to be quicker. If you melee with a sniper or a rocket launcher it's gonna be slower and maybe that's just me but I, don't, I have no problem with what they changed I just said that I liked it um, it, it one of the things that everybody complains about is that uh 
they did, they added too many lights and it ruined the atmosphere. I mean, of course it's gorgeous and pretty, but there were certain areas where it's like, yo, keep this dark. Keep this dark. And you don't need lights just to show off your new graphics and so on and so forth. It's it was sort of uh I guess redundant with the lights. Especially on like the Pillar of Autumn when you're in the tunnels uh, that, that you're initially when in the Halo Combat Evolved, the original, it tells you turn on your light. You know those dark tunnels where you're navigating? It's and on the Maw since you do it again on the Maw. Um, there, there, you don't even need your lights in the new version. And that sort of just takes away from the whole mystique of the thing. And on 343 Guilty Spark, oh, there's a train going by, so in 343 Guilty Spark, it's even more apparent because th that level's supposed to be foggy and, again, dark atmosphere and, or dark environment, I mean, and uh, it's lit up to Kingdom Come. I remember... I remember when they were demoing 343 Guilty Spark for Halo CEA. They they said, "Oh, we removed some of the fog. We, we we removed a lot of the fog and made it easier to navigate, adding lights and I'm like, damn." I mean, it still feels like combat evolved, but it also I, I guess feels like a new game, and that was sort of weird. Um, the Combat Evolved credits, I don't remember, or I don't remember how, uh, the Combat Evolved Anniversary credits, I don't remember how long the original were, but are 17 minutes long, and I'm not going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be talking for the whole thing, maybe I will, hey, um, you know what I will, I'll try to, I still have another 10 minutes to go, so, we'll see what else I can come up with, um, just keep you guys watching, there, there is a lot of, uh, I can't wait for Halo 4, so I'm going to try to go through these next two games, Halo 2 and Halo 3, possibly ODST if I have enough time, and go through them succinctly and before Halo 4 comes out. And I have a ton of things that I want to do. Uh, if you guys are watching this, and I know a lot, it's, it's, I've gained a lot of subscribers, but it's hard to gain those consistent views on my videos, because if I want to tell you guys something, hardly anybody views my videos but uh here's the thing if we uh want to what you call it do something for halo 4 i'm totally up for that i i plan on going to the midnight release of halo 4 at maybe like a GameStop or something speed home maybe do a couple hours worth of campaign recorded and then after that i want to do uh spartan ops uh side by side on my channel with regular campaign so if any of you want to do spartan ops with me that'll be awesome that'll be awesome possum uh, <laughs> and, and there's so many possibilities with halo 4 uh, i can actually start the, th the reason why i don't do many matchmaking videos anymore about halo reach and halo 3 is that they they're pretty much the same thing and obviously, after a while of Halo 4's release, everybody would have seen everything in matchmaking pretty much. So, but I can, there's so much more going on in Halo 4. Uh, there's so much more going on on screen. And I like how there's a timer uh, for your capture the flag. And, and if you're a flag carrier, there is a specific HUD element that pops up just for you to say capture. Um, if you're in a warthog with a, if you're in a warthog with a driver, it pops up for them too. And I like how it's more teamwork involved. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's rewarding you for crappy medals and so on and so forth, or remedial tasks." No, it's it's making you feel more involved. If you're if you're driving a warthog and you can't get any kills really because it's just not your match but you're doing okay driving your teammates around, it's going to reward you for that. It's, it feels like so much more is going on. And I don't know, I, I really appreciate what the people at 343 did. Obviously, I need to get my hands on it 
to formulate a full opinion, but from what I see, it looks awesome. Uh, it looks really awesome. Especially campaign and multiplayer. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, really. I have seven minutes to go. Wow. So how y'all doing? How'd y'all come across my channel? I know most of you are Halo people. And, yeah. <laughs> I like switching back and forth just to see. Look at that. Look at that sexy beast of a gas giant planet threshold. Ooh. They're bigger than Jupiter. Mm. Almost a hundred thousand kilometers bigger than Jupiter. Mmm. That just gets me in my... That just gets me in my universal thinking. Thinking, you know? And, and that's why I, uh, I made a crappy background for my YouTube channel, but it's a, it has a planet in it. And if anybody offers to make me, I, I'm, I'm not saying you have to or anything, but if anybody offers to make me a more professional looking background, it has to be black and blue theme. And it also has to have a planet in there. Why? Because I'm a fan of the universe. And I'm just, I just like to think about things like that. And again, that's a, I know I said this before, but that's why I like Halo. That's really why I like Halo. And they travel so easily. You, you hear storylines of people traveling through slip space and, and going to different planets and so on and so forth. It's really amazing to think about. I mean, and, and then and then there's this species that you don't know if it's, if they're alive. Uh, well, obviously. Uh, they're alive now. I believe Prometheans are the lowest level of Forerunner. So Prometheans are Forerunner. I, I, I believe. Maybe, I might be wrong on that. But, um, like the entry level of Forerunner. So that's sort of awesome. And, uh, but there's this species that until Halo 4, we didn't know if they were still around or if any of their weapons were still around. Forerunner. Well, and, well, the Halo Array, excuse me. The Halo Array is essentially a large weapon, so that was still around, built by the Forerunners. But, uh... Pretty much what 343 has said, in the past games, we have seen Forerunner technology and Forerunner structures, but they've always been dormant. They've never been in use. And now in Halo 4, that's really going to change. I mean... Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, in the Halo, uh, uh The Awakening, uh, Part 1, I believe it's called, Halo 4, The Awakening, Part 1, spoiler alert, 343, three, I'm sorry, don't kill me, but you guys put that in there, the Didact is in, I don't know if he's a villain or not, it says, I believe it says, Didact descends, and I believe he descends to Master Chief, and then Didact says, so I'm assuming the Didact is the one who's saying I've been waiting a long time reclaimer or something like that at the end of the E3 2012 trailer. And from my understanding, the Didact has always been a benevolent creature or a benevolent guy <laughs> who uh, thought it was his mission to protect life. So is this the Ur Didact? I believe that's what it's called. I said it in one of my previous videos. Ur Didact or the Born Stellar Didact. Born Stellar, uh, pretty much, according to Halo lore and Halo fiction, pretty much became the Didact. One of these authors for Halo 4 said uh, there were two Didacts, essentially. The Born Stellar and the Ur Didact. So, which one is in Halo 4, you know what I mean? Uh, which one is in Halo 4? And you, you know what I was thinking about? If both of these Didacts are essentially alive, what will, uh, will, will they uh, combat each other or... Will they just, maybe one of them will be like, hey, I'm the good guy. This guy got overrun with power. And if that's the case, it would seem like it would have to be the born stellar. Maybe he just got crazy. And 
maybe he just got crazy or something and who knows it's really uh interesting to think about if you if you if you know what i mean ah uh, let me look this up what a crappy time for my internet to go out man no no Fucking damn, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Ah, so, I don't know. Sorry I don't remember the names of the yachters on top of my head. But, yeah. And, uh... What if... I know they, it, it it's impossible to see any... Or it's impossible for it not to be, but what if the Didact isn't even the main villain? Maybe it's something else. I mean, it looks like the Didact symbol at the end of the E3 2012 trailer again, but who knows? I'm just speculating now. I'm pr I probably the Didact probably is the villain, and it's gonna have to explain why, because as I said, he was benevolent and nice. So, I have no idea. Um, thank you guys for watching my video. My video is continuing to support me. It, it amazes me. I, the other day, I was in a party with one of my subscribers, and some random guy walks in. My, my, the, and he didn't even tell the person about me, right? This guy, I'm subscribe, or my, one of my subscribers in the party. He didn't even tell this random guy about me, and then it, yet he's all like, "Oh, I'm, you're that Times Runs guy." And I was like, "Whoa, really?" <laughs> His, I'm a, these people are already starting to know me for my work, and I appreciate that. That you don't know how awesome that is to me. It's, it's pretty cool to think about. So, I don't know. I guess we're done, really. I know there's like a scene of guilty flying around. So we'll get there and then I'll shut up. Alrighty. Guilty!